In this podcast, we're going to talk a little bit more about ionic bonding. Specifically, we're going to talk about um, ionic crystal lattices. All right. Ionic bonding results when you have a positively charged ion and a negatively charged ion and they come together. Well, what we haven't talked about yet is that they actually form a crystal lattice. A crystal lattice where the positive and negatives alternate with one another so that the negative is closely surrounded by positive ions and the positive ion is closely surrounded by negative ions. So here's some pictures of that. So remember that sodium loses its one valence electron, gives it to chlorium, cl chlorium, chlorine, so that sodium becomes positive and chlorine becomes negative. Chlorine has an extra electron, sodium has one less. Okay, so this is what actually gives us the charges on our ions and ionic bonding, and then they're going to line themselves up in this crystal lattice structure. Um, they, the way they arrange themselves in the structure so that they maximize the attractive forces and they minimize the repulsive forces. So here we have another picture. We see them all closely stacking together again. So here we have our ions and they form these ionic bonds and then further form the ionic crystal, the NaCl crystal. So you're going to get a lattice that has positive and negative ions closely packed together like so. All right, here are some examples of some ionic solids. We got sodium chloride, potassium chloride, potassium iodide, iron 3 chloride, calcium carbonate. So remember, polyatomic ions do participate in ionic bonding, even though the polyatomic ion itself is covalently bonded. And then you have calcium chloride, magnesium sulfate, iron 3 oxide, um, silver nitrate. So any positive and negative ion is going to give you an ionic solid. All right, so in a crystal lattice of NaCl, MgO, or ALP, which one is going to give you the strongest attraction, the strongest lattice structure? Well, let's analyze the differences between these. Na is a 1 plus and Cl is a 1 minus. So those are the charges on those ions. Mg is a 2 plus, O is a 2 minus. And then Al is a 3 plus and P is a 3 minus. Now, if you go back to Coulomb's law, or F equal K Q1 Q2 divided by uh, D squared. We know that the Q1 and Q2, the charges, can increase the force. So the bigger the charges, the stronger the force of attraction. So ALP would give us our strongest crystal lattice because we have a 3 plus and a 3 minus ion. So the bigger the charges, the stronger the attraction. All right, what about these three? I mean, these four, we have LIF, NACL, KI, or KBR. Well, let's think about the differences between these. They're all 1 plus and 1 minuses, so it can't be the charge on these. So let's think about something else that could be different. Oh, the size. All right, well, just like um, the positive and negative, the size of the charge makes a difference according to Coulomb's law. So does the size of the ion. So the bigger the ion, the further the charges actually are apart, the further the nuclei are apart. So that decreases our attraction. So the smaller the ion, the actually um, greater of attractive force we have in the crystal lattice. So if we're looking at these, Li and F are going to be our smallest. So they're going to give us our um, best, strongest crystal lattice from these four. Okay, so the smaller the ion, the better, because they can fit in between each other, get really close together, which increases the attractive forces. And then the bigger the charge, the stronger um, the attractive force as well. All back to Coulomb's Law. Okay, here's a little sum up of all of that, if you're interested on the word version. All right, properties of ionic solids. Well, they tend to be brittle, have high melting and boiling points. Um, they dissolve in H2O, and they conduct electricity when they are in the liquid form, the gas form, or the aqueous form. All right, so all of the properties that we just went through are all related to their structure. So ionic solids have low vapor pressure because they have strong columic uh, interactions between the positives and negatives in that 3D structure that prevent them 
from escaping to the vapor phase very easily. Okay, so they like to stay close to one another because that attraction is so strong. If you remember back, ionic is the very strongest attractive force there is. All right, now a little bit about vapor pressure just because I mean, I've talk, talked about it before. Um, but if you were to put a solution into a closed container, you see that molecules begin to evaporate. Well, over time, you end up with molecules at the top of the container, and then you'll end up with some molecules that will actually go back into liquid form. So you'll reach an equilibrium between the molecules that are evaporating and the molecules that are condensating. And the vapor pressure is basically the pressure that is exerted on these molecules, the molecules exert on the container when they are in equilibrium. Okay, so basically we're talking about the pressure of all these molecules on this um, container right here. All right, another property that's related to ionic structure is the brittleness. Um, because of how ionic solids are stacked on top of each other, um, if you were to try to bend them, break them, snap them, you're actually forcing the molecules to realign themselves so that you get positive beside positive and negative beside negative, which we know causes repulsion. So they tend to be very brittle. They don't slide past each other very well. Um, ionic solids do not conduct electricity, but if it is melted into a liquid form, it can conduct electricity because the ions are going to be free to move throughout just as the particles um, of the ionic liquid can move past one another. Um, also, if you dissolve an ionic solid in water, you're going to get the ions separated and then surrounded by the water molecules, which allows the electricity to conduct through them. All right, here's a picture. So in this first picture, we see we have water does not conduct a current, and then we have an ionic solid still does not conduct current, but if you put the two together, the molecules will break down. Um, into positives and negatives, and you will get conduction of electricity because the negative particles um, moving through the current can move through the uh, solution very easily. All right, ionic compounds tend to not dissolve in nonpolar solvents because the attraction among the ions are stronger than the attraction among the separated ions and the nonpolar solvent molecules. Okay, so again, that ionic bond is keeping them together. If you do not put them in a polar solvent such as water, which is going to give you a partial negative, partial positive intermolecular force, then they're not going to dissolve at all. They're going to stay together. All right, and that's all you need to know about ionic solids.